I want to start because I know he said with repentance. The things that he brought out with women wearing pants, women dressing modestly, the fringes, those things are what we would consider least commandments. Because a lot of people today, they would look at those things like, nah, that ain't that big of a deal. We ain't really got to do that. Give me, uh, first, I want to start at Revelation 14 and 12, because I believe earlier you had mentioned something. What did you, what you, you said something about Jesus. So I'm gonna, so just to give further clarity, because a lot of us, when we come out of Christian, when we are in Christianity and we do Christianity, it's believe on Christ, but then we throw the commandments out of the window. When actually, in all actuality, they're coupled together, because Christ didn't come away, come to do away with the laws, the laws that he just brought out, women wearing pants, men, m women not wearing pants, men not wearing dresses, we're dressing like women. Read that in Revelation 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Without. Here is the patience of the saints. So this says, here is the patience of the saints. The saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. The saints is not every nation. The saints is the 12 tribes of Israel. And I'm going to show you that. Actually, let's show that, show that real quick. Give me that in Psalms. Hold that. We're coming right back there. Let's show that. Let's see who the saints are. Because we have to care. When we out here, we out here teaching, we're looking at our history. We're looking at us as a we're looking at us as a people. Because we go to we we we'll go to the mega church that the, that got a white pastor that's reading out of the Bible, but they're not teaching us to do the commandments. So we have to have it clear because the saints are not um, Mother Teresa. Those are not the saints. That's right. Bring it out. They, they have nothing to do with this Bible. That's so let's right. see what the saints are. Because it said, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 14. Bring it out. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people. So he said he exalted the horn of his people. The horn of his people is referring to Christ. Because Christ is the head of the nation of Israel. Read. The praise of all his saints. Says the praise of all his saints. Read. Even of the children of Israel. So the saints are the children of Israel. The saints are the people that you see on this sign. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the saints. Because we have to, we have to get true understanding of the Bible. Because we haven't been taught the Bible. Because this, this is what you have to think about. The cr Christianity, who formed and started Christianity? Um, it's the, I'm going to help you. The so-called white man. So the so-called white man brought us over here on slave ships. They conquered. They came over here and took the land from our N Native American brothers. So... If they gave us, do you think they're going to teach us really what the Bible say? No, they're going to do, they're going to do whatever they can to keep us away from the Bible. That's right. So they're not going to teach us properly. And that's what we've learned in Christianity. We learned the white man's religion. We haven't learned the Bible. So read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So it's the patience of the saints. This is they that keep the commandments of God. Women going back, converting back and wearing dresses. Women wearing, dressing modestly. Are, are young men putting fringes on their clothes? Are, are women as well? Young men, the men are not dressing like women. Read. And the faith of Jesus. So this the commandments coupled with the faith of Jesus. Matthew 5. The commandments are coupled with the faith of Jesus. So what did Jesus come to do for us? Jesus came and fulfilled those things that was written of him in God's laws. And what were those things? Sacrifice. He came and we came and was a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. How y'all doing? What's your name, my brother? Emmanuel. What's your name, sister? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay, just stand by. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to y'all. I'm going to ask y'all a couple questions as well. Read that what you got because the, the, the commandments that we brought out. How old are you, my brother? 16. Right, right. It's good that you're hearing this at a young age. So the things that you are hearing, don't let it. You got a flyer, right? The things that you are hearing, make sure you read that flyer. Make sure you take this stuff in because you're at a perfect age. Because you're learning this now, it's going to save you from a lot of heartache, a lot of trouble. Right. That's right. Bring it it's going to say this, this is a good thing. It ain't no coincidence that you walked past while we was reading this. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Bring it out. Think not. That I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. 
So Christ, this is Christ speaking. He said, don't think for a moment that I came to do away with the, what the prophets wrote or God's laws. He said, don't even think for a moment that I came to do that. I didn't come to do away with those things. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, I didn't come to destroy or to annihilate, to put it away, to say, no, nah, just follow what's in the New Testament. No, don't read the Old Testament. Christ said he didn't come to do that. He said, he, but he came to fulfill. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So he said, till heaven and earth pass, no, not one jot or one tittle shall pass from this, from this Bible. So that lets you know that the commandments that are written in this Bible, we still have to keep them. We still have to keep the Sabbath day holy. We still have to observe the, the commandments that were written. Have, that, that's why I have no other gods before me. We got to get white Jesus out of our mind because that's not Jesus. That was that was put in our place. Why? So that when we as we live our day to day lives, this was put in our minds as, at a young age. So as we grow old, we always have a fear for the so-called white man. That's why we always looking over our shoulder. We always we scared of the so-called white man. It's clear and it's plain. And, and what's going on, that's why they can shoot us down time and time and time again and what we do oh let's just forgive them we can march and do all those things but at the end of the day we look at the so-called white man as god because that was that's what was pressed in our face right read that again verse 18 for verily i say unto you till heaven and earth pass we still standing on the earth the heavens are still there so till heaven and earth pass read one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. It says one jot or one tittle, no, no, no comma, no, no dot, no I, no semicolon, and it's not going to pass from the law. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Uh -huh. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. It says whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. And we know if you know a little bit about the Bible, it ain't really, no, it ain't no least commandments. But he, why did he say least commandments? Because in our minds, a lot of times we think, oh, man, I'm gonna, he going to put me to death because I don't grow my beard. Oh, he going to put me to death because I didn't put on the dress. I didn't because I'm, I'm doing this. No, those are very important. They seem they seem small in our mind. But to God, it's just like if you, you have you have children. When you and your, your children are probably older, they adults probably. But 42. But when they were younger, if you get if you told your son when he was younger, hey, this is your chore. You got to clean the room. You got to take out the garbage. You got to clean the kitchen. Your daughters, things of that nature. If they didn't do it, what was the what would happen? Punishment. They got punishment when they didn't do the things that you required of them. Right. That's the same thing with the Most High God. That's right. He gave his people. I think the officer brought it out earlier that the the judgments and the commandments were given to the children of Israel That's right. because we are his sons. The nation of Israel are the children of God. So he gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to keep. Whether you whether in your mind you think they least or great, he gave it to us to keep and we got to do it. Read. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So if he says whoever break one of these least commandments and teach men so. Teaching men is not just what we're doing right here when we go into the Bible. You also teach people by your actions. That's right. If you're not applying the commandments, you're not doing what the Bible say, you're teaching those, yo, you're teaching your sons, you're teaching everybody that's looking up to you, everybody that's following you, they're going to duplicate what you do. I have a son. My, well, my son see me, he got a, he see I got a beard. When he he, he, he uh, go in the, in the bathroom and, put, and make the soap soapy and put a beard on his face because he want to do what I do. He want to do what he see me do. So we teach by our actions just as well as by what come out of our mouth. That's right. Read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So what is that? What y'all think that means? It says he, that he shall break any, the least of my commandments. Give me Romans, uh, what's that, 3 and 31 or 6 and 23? He says if he shall break one of these least commandments, he said it says he's going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. What do y'all think that's talking about? If you break the commandment, he's going to be considered least in the kingdom of heaven. 623. Yeah. Read that. But first off, what's sin? Do you know what sin is? Emmanuel, right? What is sin? Say it again. You can speak louder. When you disobey, when you disobey, when you disobey what? 
God's commandments. Let's get that. Read that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show y'all what, what that scripture, when it says he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to get the understanding on that. Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. So the, the, the subject matter, whosoever commits sin. So whosoever commits sin, what's the results? Transgressive. Also the law. Transgresses the law or disobeys God's instructions. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Uh -huh. And ye know that he was... Six and twenty-three. So we know that sin is the breaking of God's commandment, or sin is the disobeying of God's correct His uh, instructions. Read the book of Romans, chapter six and verse twenty-three. For the wages of sin is death. So it says the wages of sin is death. A wages you go if you go to a job, you punch in, you work forty hours a week. Let's say you get paid every two weeks. When you work a full two weeks. At the end of them two weeks, your wages for your work is your paycheck. So whether it's six hundred dollars, however it means, the wages for that paycheck, your 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 what you receive from working those hours is your paycheck. So now it says the wages of sin, the wages of sin, the wages of disobeying what God's instruction is what death is death, meaning you're gonna be destroyed. And if with God, it's not just your life being taken from this body on this earth. It's your soul being destroyed. You're not getting the kingdom. So what are we learning in, in Christianity? What are we learning in the churches? Because they say all you got to do is believe. Give me that in Sirach 32 and 24. And I'm going to ask y'all a couple questions too. Come, come, come close. I see you kind of easing off. You got somewhere to go? Okay, li listen up to this. Because the things that you heard, you heard them. Now you got, after you leave here today, you got to continue to go in. You got to go get a Bible. Look at that flyer. You got to continue to search these things out so that your, your faith can build up so you can believe these things and start applying them. Get in contact. You got the, the flyer. Get in contact with the men that's here in the city. That's right. So, that, so we can help build your spirit up. But read that. Because what? Because we're in the church. I, and our, our people in church all the time. Oh, I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe, but what are they doing behind that belief? Right, are they out. showing an example of what the Bible tells us to do? Let's see what the Bible says. When you, when you say you believe, what does that mean? The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord. So if I say I believe in the Lord, what is my mindset? What is my actions going to show? Read. Taketh heed to the commandment. So he that believeth in the Lord, you take heed to the commandment. To take heed is take caution not to do against the commandment. Just like if you said if you sat down in the chair, if you got if you got a car, you get in that car, you believe that when you start that car, it's gonna start up. You believe when you hit the gas that it's gonna move. So the same thing with the commandments. You if you believe in the Lord, you're gonna do what he told you to do. That's right. You're not gonna doubt his word, you're not gonna say that his word was written by men. You're gonna do what the Bible say to do because you say you believe. Anything that you believe in. You believe that if you go, if you you believe that if you go to college, you're gonna get a degree. So it's the same thing. You it's actions that you gotta take. If you go to college, you have to physically go to college, complete the classwork, complete the coursework to get that certificate. If you believe that car going you gotta go in the car. If you believe the car, if I if, if this is my car right here, and I believe that it's gonna take me from here home, my belief is is action, because now I'm gonna get in that car. Put the key in the ignition and start it. Because I believe that that car going to get me home. I believe he's going to drive. And when I drive, I expect that the wheels are going to stay on the car. I, I expect that the engine in the trans is going to run all the way till I get home. Because I believe. That's the same thing with God's laws, with God's commandments. We say we believe in God. We say we believe in Jesus. We got to do what he said. Because the, the officer brought out earlier that he says, Christ said, he that loveth me going to keep my commandments. We say we love God. We say we believe God. That means we're going to do what he say to do. That's what the Bible. Let's read that one more time. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So now he says that he said he that believeth in the Lord. It says he shall fare never the worse. What, what, does, what do you think that means? It says he shall fare never the worse. You ain't gonna have no fear. You're not gonna. And it says he shall fear. A fear is some. It's another similar word to wage. 
Meaning that if you keep the commandments, the most high going to look out for you. The most high going to fight for you. The most high going to make things happen because you're you showing that you believe in his word. Just like a parent with their child. Your child grow, do what they do what you told them to do. You're you going to reward them as they get older. I use myself, for example. When, when I was younger, when I was doing things, I was going out, going to the club, drinking and stuff like that. My mother wouldn't let me step foot in her car. I asked her for her car keys. She said, boy, you better get out of my face. But then once I started changing, I started getting myself together. I got, got a solid job. Stop going to the club. Stop drinking. She was like, fine, you can take my car to work. Fine, you can take my car to do these things. It's the same thing with the God, with, with the God of the Bible. The, ch the God of the children of Israel. Same thing with our God. When we do his commandments, when things going Things troubling you at job, your supervisor getting on your back unnecessarily. You send up the prayers. The Most High gonna make things happen. Where that supervisor, he gonna change that supervisor's spirit, and that supervisor gonna back up. That supervisor gonna show you a, some, show you favor when you, normally you wouldn't get it. That's what it means. We have to take heed to the commandments of God. We used to scream Black Power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth